Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to a new TW2020 video. Join us for our first pay-per-view of All Elite Wrestling, of course, that is EW Blood and Guts. And yeah, looking forward to this, a lot of uncertainty about it, how will we draw, will we gain pop, and most importantly, will we make a profit for this month? That is all stuff that is to be determined in this show. It's intended to be a normal event, the ticket price in the set is normal. I think the only one that I'm really going to go all out for is no pun intended all out which have made their season finale i've put an extra set in here fifteen thousand towards that didn't feel like it was too much of course we'll be broadcasting live on fight tv in demand and bleacher report live bit of a negative though john moxley's working for new japan didn't know Great, scraps are co main event for the World Championship, so yeah, you'd get absolutely slaughtered for that if that happened in real life, so that's something I need to keep an eye on going forward. Uh, so Moxley and Spears will have that match, hopefully, down the line. Uh, we'll obviously explain that as the show goes on. We are in the Thompson Bowling Arena, 21,678. We're expecting just above that, so we should, hopefully, in an ideal world, see a sellout crowd. So before we jump in, Remember, as always, if you are new here, we like is much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, a sub just means all these videos will drop into your inbox, so you don't have to go hunting for them if you enjoy them. In the comment section, I don't know what the script is, but um, I'll keep an eye on the situation. And if you can type, you can type. If you can't, then I'm still just making sure everything's safe before we're good to carry on with that. But as I say, thanks for tuning in, taking the time out of your day. Remember, good sources for TW is the TWDB.com. It's the Fantasy Booker subreddit. And of course check out the Grey Dog software forums for all the patches and the game if you want to buy it or trial it on the demo as well. And a lot of good written content there and a lot of mods and a lot of graphical stuff. So yeah, definitely check that out. But yeah, let's see how this goes. Hope for the best. Let's get the show on the road. So I believe that's a sellout, 21,678 at the Thompson Bowling Arena. I mean, that with some pre-show action. And it's a decent pre-show match that sees Darby Allen defeat Kip Sabian in 14-13 with a coffin drop. A 67 rating here for the matchup, which is pretty decent. Good to get Kip in this kind of spotlight. Darby is a 73, Kip with a 49, and Kip's also getting better at his gimmicks. So overall, that's pretty good. A few negatives there. Actually, only one actually is inconsistency. Matt Halvey coming up clutch as a road agent as well. Good man. And our second pre-show match, yeah, a female match that didn't get the boot by the crowd, fantastic. We're getting somewhere with this division. But in a pre-show match that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling, the team of Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Priscilla Kelly defeated Chris Statlander and Riho in 9.53 when Britt Baker defeated Chris Statlander. Yeah, pretty good. Again, just building our division up, as I say, just getting these ladies over. In ring performances, everybody's kind of between the 35 and 43 mark, so that's pretty good. The segment overall, a 43. So well done to the ladies. As I say, this division will start off slow, but we are hoping to take them to, to really big heights. So, we start the show explaining the stupidness by myself. Before a video package of the show, we see a clip from Post Dynamite where we see John Moxley heading towards his car, but out of nowhere, Sean Spears runs out and attacks him with a steel chair. He brutalises Moxley and stumbles, uh, Max, uh, Moxley stumbles upon the up. Basically, Spears opens the door of Moxley's car before sticking Moxley's arm in it and ramming the door off Moxley's arm before smacking it again with a chair because he is the chairman and Moxley rolls around in pain. Would you do this if you were a number one contender ready for a championship match? Possibly, you don't want to weaken your opponent, I get you probably wouldn't because yeah, you could write him out. But yeah, uh, as you see there, I didn't realise Mox was unavailable. So, very frustrating by myself, but we've got to write him out somewhere. And clearly I obviously scribbled this down because I spelt, I've done the wrong right. Silly me. But anyway, 63, pain in the arse, I'm really sorry for butchering the main, the, one of the main matches here, but yeah, at least it gets a bit of heat on Sean Spears in this situation. 63 to open the show. Opening contest was about to have good heat and decent wrestling. Brody Lee, Mr. Brody Lee, defeated Trent Barretta in 8.39 with a pile driver. This got a 62. Both guys pretty similar in the ring performance. Brody Lee was off his game. But yeah, 
you can see the cut off there with no Chuck Taylor in the picture and ever since you know, Chucky T get ran down uh, yeah, it's just not been the same for any members of the Best Friends. The crowd got hotter through this as Mr Brody Lee gains some momentum. Into our Women's Championship match, there was a bout that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling but Nyla Rose defeated Hikaru Shida in 953 with a camel clutch making the second defence of the women's title. Good to know that these two together didn't get booed either. So I don't know if this is either. We're working it well with what we've been doing with both ladies or if the recent patch has kind of adjusted that. I need to take a look at that. But anyway, 41 is okay. All the ladies are at that kind of same level of high 30s to low 30s. Some in at the 40s but a big way to go in the division but we'll get there and Nyla Rose manages to retain a storytelling match as well, so that's going to take a few negative points off the rating. Promo with MJF. So my opponent tonight is Jungle Boy? I mean really? Jungle Boy? Jesus, I guess I won't be getting paid by the other tonight. It's ridiculous, a showcase event like this, and I have to face Jungle Boy. I mean, does he even wash? He lives in a jungle for God's sake. I don't even want to touch him. What an absolute nerd. So MGF's not too thrilled with the fact he's got to face Jungle Boy tonight. Uh, his promo got a 64 and benefiting from being flavour of the month. Wonderful have that next month and it got the crowd hotter. Their matchup was decent. MGF defeated Jungle Boy in 1342 with a Swanton Bomb. Uh, the story in advance, MGF 56 to Jungle Boy's 43. Luchasaurus did some good work at ringside because of the good chemistry between him and Jungle Boy. MGF off his game. Uh oh. Not ideal, but as I say, it's a good victory for him. Gains him some momentum uh, and he'll go on to other things going forward. Next up, we had the TNT title on the line and it was a decent matchup. We saw Lance Archer defeat Christopher Daniels in 1227 with the blackout. Lance Archer wins the TNT title. Simple. Basic, effective, I just feel it was the right man to put it on. So he comes out of this as champ with a 59 rating. A better performance than uh, Daniels. Jake doing some good work at ringside. Uh, a few negatives, of course, for the declining physical ability. Once Archer wins the match and Jake Roberts take the cha takes the championship and he gives it to Lance Archer and raises it in the air. Jake then takes the title. And he says, AW, take a good look at this man. Hell, look at this monster. Here's your first and only TNT champion. Expect this championship to never leave this man's waist as he will destroy any man who is put in front of him. This is the archway of destruction. See what I did there? But uh, yeah, very, very strong promo there. A 77 rating suggests that um, Jake's going to be somebody that will be fantastic uh, for Lance as a mouthpiece. And yeah, looking forward to booking Lance Archer at the moment as your TNT champion. Any negatives there? Not a single one. Next up we had a fatal four-way elimination match to be the number one contenders for the tag team championships. It was a decent matchup and it saw Lucha Bros defeat Private Party, SCU and the Hybrid 2 in 23-26. The other abomination was Hybrid 2 first, followed by the private party and then SCU. Uh, the weak link here was Angelico, so let me try and push him along because he is his class. Everybody here done really, really well. Um, and of course, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix are a different level in terms of in-ring performance in this mod, but four excellent, excellent tag teams. So the rating gets 74 and that does set up a potential date in the future between the Lucha Bros and Hangman and Kenny Omega. Could others get involved though? The Lucha Bros have won the elimination match and get a future opportunity to face Hangman Page and Kenny Omega for the AEW World titles. They're posing on the top ropes before their music is cut off. Detroit is screamed out and then unfamiliar music plays with two men walking out to the Tron and pointing at their hands. And then at the Lucha Bros. These two men making their AEW debuts, Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns. So a 43 rating, not entirely ideal. Sabin debuts a fan favourite, Shelley's the fan's own, they were great and adequate there. 
um, because they are basically that. I was looking like Dude and stuff like that, but fans favourite because they are popular babyface wrestlers. And yeah, what a tag division! What a tag division! Next up, cool main then for tonight was a great wrestling match with good heat and had Pack defeat Nick Jackson in 1809 with a 6.30 cent on. 81 ratings, extraordinary from these two, um, as I say, pretty last minute, but it was good to get them together. Gives Pack a strong victory on the pay-per-view, keeps him happy, and only negative was Excalibur's ring work. We have an over-the-top entrance for Matt Harmony, despite, well it was still 5 minutes, but that's the lowest you could make it, but his over-the-top entrance as he begin, uh, prepares to enter the battlefield for the 5-on-5 cage match. It was able to be a cage match, um, it does have to end in submission, which is weird, but yeah, we've managed to somehow wangle that in. So 47 for Matt's not fantastic. And the main event itself, oh, it's all gone horribly wrong. We could see a horrible, horrible one here. Let's explain it. In a good match, the inner circle, Jericho, Santana, Ortiz, Hager and Sammy Guevara defeat Hangman Page, Kenny Omega. Cody, Matt Hardy and Matt Jackson in a Cage Wars match in 27 away when Chris Jericho submitted Cody with the walls of Jericho falling in interference from Cash Wheeler. Who's the six? There we go. So, segment will get a 58. So I, I think as well because we used this gimmick match it kind of get penalised heavily. We'll double check that in Dirt Sheet but they said they were going to do it in real life so I wanted to get it covered and yeah, I thought it was a good way to use it. Cody sustained a partially ruptured pectoralis major tendon, so I think that could be a bad injury. We'll obviously double check that. Matt Hardy had an in-ring performance of 70, sorry, Matt Jackson 74, Matt 53, Cody 69, Kenny 81. Uh, yeah, not great from the inner circle there, the only one that actually stand out was Sammy Guevara with 67. Jericho just for 61. Cash Wheeler debuted his tough guy gimmick, which got an initial good rating. Uh, there you go. The type of match was very poor choice for this audience. So, as much as um, it's not what the audience would have wanted in this, it was booked in real life, and I did want to follow from that. So, yeah, I'll take I'll take the hit on that because I wanted to follow real life to start with and pull away from it. Uh, and yeah, lots of negatives here probably. Aye. So, yeah, the injury, and then that's going to cause a whole lot of hits there. So, I think we might even lose pop here. We'll see. Hopefully, the co main carries. Jake Roberts does that. That's fine. Jake Hager got backstage heat because he injured Cody with a botch move. Um, we finished the show. Six is unveiled uh, as the six man of Inner Circle, which is Cash Wheeler. He entered the cage and give, uh, basically gave the inner circle the numbers advantage and then obviously because of this attack on Cody, Cody then taps to Jericho. They stand in the middle of the ring, Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana and Ortiz, Cash Wheeler. The inner circle stands there taller and stronger than ever. So basically obviously I couldn't get Dax Harwood, he went back to WWE and yeah we got Cash Wheeler got one of the two, which is not ideal for storyline purposes, so he'll join the inner circle, and that gives us six men for this villainous stable. So Jericho comes out of it looking well, Ortiz and Hager struggled, and just a 6 day rating here, so we'll have a look and see the repercussions of this. So in fact, we did carry. So we've gained pop in 56 regions, so that's everywhere across the world, which is good. Because obviously this showcase is everywhere on what the man? One of the one of the networks will showcase everywhere. But sold out gate as well. And yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with that. Hagar we'll need to see about that we'll jump back into the main screen. Of course, we will obviously see who else has been signed, but these ones I don't think really spoils too much, so um yeah, we'll see what happens with them. Let's have a look here. WWE have split with progress. Uh, there's a code injury. Uh, take a few weeks. Oh, that's not too bad then. Blood and guts. Feedback was great. Seth Rollins has been arguing with Jinzo. I don't know who Jinzo is. Should there? There's been some Seth Rollins arguing on social media. 
Why I never. Uh, Wally Mack and under the feud and there's tensions with progress and WWE as well. That's fair enough. So John Moxley's gone. Oh, I was only alone. Probably lose that championship, so that's fine. We won't hopefully lose him out again. Uh, 589,415 viewers and the buy rate was 0.15. Let's delete all of that. Let's go to finance. Yeah, we're definitely going to lose money. Great. That's all we need. Uh, losing money and probably going to be in debt within 10 months. So, yeah, not exactly great. So we'll keep an eye on that because I don't see us making money. Uh, I wanted to check medical. Are you going to give me medical here? You are not going to give me medical here. That's who we're saying. We're saying Jacob Fatu. I want to see how good he is, and obviously the owner we know about. Uh, only Bunny and DDP are unhappy not being on the event. Cody is obviously morale issues because of injury, and Hager because of the botch. Does that mean? Well, oh shit! Cody may not resign. I better keep him happy. Imagine he went to WWE. I'd be kicking the balls. Uh, Why oh why? I'm only getting contract and popularity. Shoot, where the hell am I going? There we go. That's what I was wanting. Strong dislike of Jack Swagger. So there you go. Yep, they've got a hatred because of that. That's what I was looking for. Let's get used to these now. That's another one I want to look at is medical. Obviously, 18 days. That's fine. Yep, you'll not miss anything. Yes, we've got one match looking weekly to be set up for the next event then. Swagger versus Cody. Uh, I'm going to quickly progress while we're on the video to the next day because the good thing is about it being July 1st is for the first time I'm hitting July because obviously my WWF save started in January and I'm just getting to there. We've got Wrestler of the Year so far, etc. And we'll obviously see our financial predicament. So I'll be looking at this as well. Uh, Daniel Bryan is a Wrestler of the Year so far. Company of the Year is WWE. Okay, Team of the Year is Golden Magic and El Higio del Vi uh, Vikingo. Match of the Year, Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. Show of the Year, Domination 2020. Young Wrestler is El Higio del Vikingo again. Veteran, Dr. Wagner Jr. Female Wrestler is Charlotte Flair. Woo! And then we get Bray Wyatt on social media speaking to John Cena. As he's about to start a program with Roman Reigns and AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. About to start one in NXT, I'll have Keith Lee versus Cameron Grimes and the Broserweights against the Singh Brothers in a lengthy feud. Interesting. And Mikey Nichols the same with Noah. But, there's your worry right there. Ugh, not good. Not good, and most of that is on production, so. I think I might try and lower production costs just because I don't want to be looking in 10 months and we are massively in debt because we're already paying workers a lot and to keep them some of them afloat we are going to have to obviously have some bidding wars with WWE as well. So yeah, not ideal. But um, we'll take a look into that when we can. But cheers for watching, much appreciated. And yeah, let us know what you thought of the show. Whether if the comments are open, pop it in there. If not, just give me a wee tweet. Um, have you ever made the mistake either with Moxley? Yeah, let's be on the road for our next event, which should be Fight for the Fallen. Um, it will be Fight for the Fallen, I think. I'll keep that, but I'm not going to have it in two weeks because I want me to build, so I'll probably move that to either the third or fourth week of July. I'll let you know as we go on along. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.